This right here, this is my final project for the novel The Kite Runner. So what I did for my final project was I sculpted a tree using two different wires, gold and black, and I twisted them up and shaped it into this, into this bonsai tree. And the bonsai tree is sitting on, on a hill, and the hill is separated from, in grass and sand. Additionally, there's a kite on the tree that's tied up. And um, here is a mirror as an adult and a mirror as a child standing in front of the tree. And in the sand, in the sand it's the notorious watch. And now, now let's get deep into the meaning behind all of the aspects that are present in my creative project. Okay, so let's get into the meaning behind the tree. So I chose to sculpt this bonsai tree to parallel the pomegranate tree in the novel. In the novel, the pomegranate tree symbolizes Amir and Hassan's friendship. They'll go to the pomegranate tree and Amir will read stories to Hassan. So the friendship is in full bloom and they even, they even in, instate their names in the tree to show that their friendship will essentially last forever. So they carve their names of the, into the tree and they state Amir and Hassan, the sultans of Kabul. This shows how their friendship will be forever lasting whether they remain friends throughout their whole lives or their friendship is just simply a memory. Unfortunately, after Amir betrays Hassan by just standing by and watching him being raped by the evil boys, their friendship is nothing like it ever was. They even go back to the tree one day and Amir, who is just full of guilt, insists that Hassan takes his revenge and, and throws a pomegranate at him. Amir so badly wants to relieve himself of his guilt and he starts throwing pomegranates at Hassan. Hassan, being the loyal and amazing person that he is, doesn't do anything. He doesn't react to Amir's anger. In fact, instead of throwing a pomegranate back at Amir, he smashes the pomegranate on his own head. This consequently leads to Amir being left with guilt throughout his childhood and into his adult life. He then returns to Kabul during his later adult years to retrieve Hassan's son, Sarab. When he's in Kabul, he goes back to the pomegranate tree and he sees that the tree is, is dead and there's no life to it. It's no longer blooming pomegranates. But he notices that their names are still carved into the tree. So even though the tree is dead, their friendship will live on forever. The names that they have carved into the tree have left memories that will last a lifetime. So I chose to represent the deterioration and the death of the tree using the black wire and I chose to use the gold wire to represent the strength of their friendship as, as kids. They're intertwined because their friendship never really dies. By the end of the book, their friendship is it's obviously gone because Hassan has been exiled by the Taliban, but instead of completely dying and just becoming one solid black tree from the death of their friendship, there's an equal amount of gold because their friendship still remains because Amir has finally relieved himself of his past guilt and achieved redemption. So for the carving of their names in the tree, I chose silver, I chose a silver color because it's sort of in between the gold and the black. So their friendship is full of life and they're really good friends as kids, but after the betrayal, it sort of turns to this tingy black and then it goes on. But that's what their friendship is all about. It's between the highs and the lows. And I also chose silver because it's sort of it's sort of like a steel or an iron in a way because it might it might rust and there might be some bad parts to their relationship but you can always brush that off and clean it off and their friendship will be as good as it ever was so additionally besides paralleling the symbol of the pomegranate tree in the novel i chose to create a bonsai tree I chose to sculpt the bonsai tree because in the Japanese religion of Shinto, every object has a soul. And in, in their religion, um, bonsais are highly respected and they'll put in lots of work to take care of their, of their trees. 
so they'll give it its own soul and it's really a, a work of art because they'll feed it and they'll make sure the colors are right and the shape is right and th that's what I wanted to underscore in, in my tree because the, the tree is truly the soul of the friendship. So the fact that the tree is on the hill is just literal because in the book the tree was the tree was on top of a hill. So I chose to split the hill into two halves along with the rest of the environment. So one half is grass while the other is sand. And so on one half you have grass and it's just full of life and the tree is blooming. This branch is just growing off onto the side of, of life which is the grass. And then you have this side which is more dreary but the tree the tree still lives on. Even though by the end of the book when he returns to Hassan and all, all there is is just there's not, there's not really much left to their friendship. So I chose to split it into two because I have the redemption side and the happiness and then I have the betrayal and the depression. So on the green side you have the grass and it's just full of life. Life just like the friendship was as kids and then it returns to be when Amir returns to Kabul to adopt Sarab and achieve his redemption. On this side, you have sand, which is just the death and the tree. But even though the tree has a hard time living in this environment, it's, it still roots itself because their friendship is so strong and it will last forever, no matter what the conditions are. So in this picture here, this is Amir as an adult. Looking closely at his face, you can see that he's happy. This is because once he's returned to Kabul and he sits next to the pomegranate tree, he's happy because he's now redeemed himself and he feels forgiven for his past mistakes. His face is red because it's the pomegranate that's over his face. At the beginning of the novel, Amir insisted that Hassan throws a pomegranate at him to relieve, the, to relieve his guilt, but he never does. Instead, Hassan smashes it on his own head. The fact that Hassan smashes it on his own head leaves Amir with, filled with guilt for the majority of his life. It isn't until he returns to Kabul where he relieves his guilt. So the fact that I have his face colored in red shows that he's, got, he's finally got what he's wanted. He's finally redeemed himself of his past mistakes. So if, it, if Hassan were to throw the pomegranate at Amir, then he would have felt like all of his guilt had just washed away. But this isn't the case. He achieves, his, he achieves his redemption when he returns to Kabul to adopt Sarab, Hassan's son. At this point, redemption is achieved. And it is at this point that the pomegranate finally hits Amir. Amir has finally achieved redemption. So there's Amir as an adult, and on the other side is Amir as a child. Amir as a child is guilt-ridden and you can just see the look of unhappiness in his face because he's betrayed his best friend. And I chose to put both of these characters together because it shows a development. Amir, Amir is now looking forward onto his life. He's looking towards what's new and he's finally re relieved himself of his guilt. Amir as a child is filled with remorse and he just can't help but look back on their friendship and look at the tree. And that's why I chose to have Amir as an adult looking out while Amir as a child looking towards the tree. So I have the watch on the sand side here because Amir as a child, guilt ridden after betraying Hassan, he wants to frame him and, and just rid him from his life. So he decides to hide the watch in the sand. So Amir hopes that his father Baba will think that Hassan had stolen the watch and kick him from their house and Amir will never see him ever again. The watch symbolizes Amir's devious ways and his guilt. He wanted to rid the guilt from his life and the fact that the watch is in the sand, besides the fact that in the book it quite literally is in the sand, I chose to put it into the sand for a more deeper meaning because 
I wanted to show that Hassan had no life and it was the dark side of Amir's personality and that's why the watch or the, si the symbol of betrayal lies in the sand. As I said, the sand represents the darkness and the death and the deterioration of Amir and Hassan's friendship while the green side of the grass represents the life and good deeds and the redemption. So, finally, I have the kite in the tree. So, in the novel, the kite symbolizes happiness for Amir and Hassan. Many of their childhood memories are entrapped in kites and they just get so much joy out of flying kites. So that's why I chose to model a kite. But along with that, I wanted to go a little bit deeper. So, although the kite represents the happiness and the joy between Amir and Hassan, it also represents the betrayal. So that's why I have the kite in between the grass and the sand. As kids, Amir and Hassan would fly kites, but one day after winning the kite fighting competition, Hassan goes to retrieve the kite, but is then raped by Asef and the other evil boys. So the kite also, the kite symbolizes, it symbolizes happiness, but at the same time it represents the dread that has filled Amir. All in all, I wanted to create an art piece that could represent the symbols throughout the novel. In summary, I recreated the pomegranate tree, the kites, the watch, and the general themes of betrayal and redemption in the novel The Kite Runner.